On Milwaukee's Grand Avenue, once lined with arching elms and magnificent mansions, the city's famous beer baron, Captain Frederick Pabst, would begin construction of his palatial mansion in the summer of 1890. Architects George Ferry and Alfred Klass had spent months conceiving and delineating a residence that would not only meet the expectations of the discerning captain, but would also make the new firm of Ferry and Klass one of the leading firms in Wisconsin. Brick by brick, the Pabst Mansion took form, creating a building that is now familiar to hundreds of thousands around the world. The architects had estimated the cost of such a fine home to be $75,000. But as the project proceeded and all of the latest technology added to the house, such as central forced air heating by the Johnson system of heat regulation, now known today as Johnson Controls, 10 bathrooms, electric lighting, and a battery-powered burglar alarm, the cost rose to a staggering $254,000. As construction drew to a close, the mansion was filled with dozens of costly paintings that the Pabst family had collected throughout Europe, placing them in rooms that were executed in various architectural styles with custom paneling and furniture made in Milwaukee. While the Pabst family certainly could have imported woodwork and furnishings to outfit their home, they decided to make this a home crafted in Milwaukee as a showcase for local artisans. As soon as the Pabst family took up residence in the mansion, it served as the backdrop for large parties, receptions, and the Pabst family even hosted the soon-to-be president, Theodore Roosevelt. It was also the scene of more intimate dinners and evening musical salons preferred by the demure mistress of the house, Maria Pabst. In 1893, Captain Pabst had the opportunity of a lifetime to serve his beer exclusively to over 27 million people at the Columbian Exposition of Chicago, perhaps the greatest single event of the late 19th century, highlighting the prowess of American industrial and cultural achievements. For the fair, Captain Pabst had created a remarkable structure, all of highly decorative terracotta, embellished with symbols of the brewing industry. The Pabst Pavilion was further enhanced by a dazzling dome of colored art glass and within the structure, a model of all the major buildings owned by Pabst in Milwaukee, burnished in gold. Pabst's even greater dominance at the fair was evidenced by the Pabst Brewing Company's achievement of securing the Supreme Gold Medal Award for the finest lager beer in the world, something that Pabst is still proud of and is emblazoned on every bottle of Pabst Blue Ribbon to this day. Beaming with pride, Captain Pabst had the entire pavilion dismantled, crated, and shipped to his residence, where he erected the structure once again, this time at his private summer conservatory. The glittering years of the Pabst Mansion as one of Milwaukee's Gilded Age showplaces was regrettably all too brief. The captain's declining health led to his death in 1904, and Mrs. Pabst died just two years later in 1906. While the Pabst Mansion was only 14 years old, its future was already in question. Milwaukee's moneyed class was no longer building on Grand Avenue, but on Milwaukee's Lake Drive, overlooking Lake Michigan. All of the Pabst children had homes of their own, and so the family homestead was no longer needed. The Pabst mansion sat closed for two years before a new owner appeared and ushered in the next chapter of its life. In 1908, the Archdiocese of Milwaukee purchased the Pabst mansion with the intent of using it as the residence of the Archbishop. Over six decades, five archbishops, and dozens of Franciscan sisters came and went, making the Pabst Mansion the backdrop of their lives in a relatively unchanged mansion of Milwaukee's Victorian past. While the Pabst Mansion continued on as a private home, mansion after mansion along the former Grand Avenue, now West Wisconsin Avenue, fell to the wrecking ball beginning as early as the late 1920s. Modern offices and a hotel now replace the homes that once flanked the Pabst Mansion. With the mansion now surrounded by commercial buildings, its velvety green lawn and leafy trees became an oasis in its now urban environment. After Archbishop William Cousins was installed as Archbishop in 1958, the mansion went through a period of redecoration. Walls and ceilings were painted white. Wall-to-wall -wall white carpets were installed in an effort to modernize the maturing Victorian home. By the early 1970s, the Pabst Mansion was beginning to show its true age, and rising energy and repair costs made the house almost prohibitive to maintain. Worst of all, the captain's little gem, 
the pavilion, was suffering the most. A structural inner frame of cast iron was beginning to corrode, which then set off a chain reaction, cracking and breaking blocks of terracotta apart. In 1974, the Archdiocese felt that it would be best to let the mansion go than to continue investing money into its maintenance. It was then sold to the owner of the neighboring carriage house inn for the purpose of raising the house for a needed parking structure. This came as no surprise to many, as this had indeed been the fate of dozens of mansions and important buildings throughout the city. But times were changing in Milwaukee. A number of important structures had been demolished in the 1960s, including the Northwestern train station, the Chicago-Milwaukee-St. Paul train station, and scores of mansions, leaving the Pabst Mansion as one of the best representations of Milwaukee's 19th century architectural past. The Pabst Mansion, at its heart, was still the fine home it had always been. Florence Schroeder, a plucky and enthusiastic interior designer, saw the interior of the home and resolved that the Pabst Mansion must not be lost like all the rest. She banded together a group of friends and businessmen with the mission of saving the Pabst Mansion as a house museum. By literally passing the hat and generating enough publicity in local media, she drew the public's attention to what they would be losing if the Pabst Mansion would be demolished. To help the fledgling organization save the mansion from the immediate threat of demolition, local businessman John Conlon purchased the mansion and helped steer the wrecking ball away from the house. In a compromise to find parking for the hotel's needs, the carriage house was sacrificed in order to save the Pabst Mansion itself. Less than one year later, with the help of a state grant for its purchase and financing from literally 23 savings and loans, writing 23 $10,000 mortgages for its purchase, Wisconsin Heritages Incorporated now owned the Paps Mansion. The battle for its preservation had finally been won. Over the next 30 years, rooms were restored one by one. Using microscopic paint analysis and historic photographs taken in 1897 for the Pabst family, we could see the rooms as they once were. Through the support of volunteers, donors, and the work of Wisconsin artisans, the Pabst Mansion's rooms have come back to life. The sheen of silk wall coverings, the glint of gold leaf, and the smell of polished wood once again are part of the perfect atmosphere of the Pabst Mansion. Empty rooms are filled with original furnishings, objects and paintings, all chosen by Captain and Mrs. Pabst over 120 years ago. The Pabst family of today recognizes the importance of the house to the community and beyond and has graciously donated hundreds of objects in order that they may return to their original home. Since opening the Pabst Mansion to the public in 1978, one and a half million people have visited the Pabst Mansion and marveled at its magnificence. We are excited as we look towards the future, making the Pabst Mansion a true destination, expanding our offerings and doing our part to showcase one of Milwaukee's great landmarks to the world. We hope that as we move forward, you will join us as we begin to write perhaps the greatest chapter yet in the Pabst Mansion's illustrious history.